um, and of course that we are expecting the news from Balmoral that she's having uh, treatment or that indeed they are unable to help Her Majesty anymore. A few moments ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The palace has just issued uh, this statement. It says the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Within the past few minutes, Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. To recap on the statement, the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King, that is Charles, uh, and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Her Majesty was 96 years old. She became Queen on the 6th of February, 1952, on the death of her father, King George VI. She heard the news while staying at a game lodge in Kenya at the age of 25, and her coronation in Westminster Abbey was watched by more than 20 million people. She was uh, married to Prince Philip for 73 years until his death in April of 2021. And Charles, their first child, was born in 1948. Uh, he now becomes the new king. In 2015, Her Majesty passed Queen Victoria to become the longest reigning monarch in British history. And in February 2022, we saw the 70th anniversary of her becoming queen. And she made more than 250 visits to Commonwealth countries, and was head of state in Australia and Canada and New Zealand. Winston Churchill was Britain's Prime Minister when she came to the throne, and Liz Truss was a 15th Prime Minister. The BBC is interrupting its normal programmes to bring you an important announcement. This is BBC News from London. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. In a statement, the palace said the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. BBC Television is broadcasting this special programme reporting the death of Her Majesty the Queen. And I'm afraid to say in the last few moments, the following statement has been released.
It reads, uh, I will find that statement for you. The Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. So let's take a moment to reflect on that news. This is Channel 4. We now join the Channel 4 News. Good evening. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Queen Elizabeth II, the longest reigning monarch in British history. Her reign lasted for 70 years, from post-war austerity and the end of empire through the expansion of the Commonwealth. She helped preserve the institution of the monarchy during times of massive social change. At her coronation, the Queen repeated her pledge to serve her people and fulfilled it throughout her reign with a combination of skill and a sense of duty. In a statement, Buckingham Palace said, the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. The Queen died today at Balmoral Castle in Scotland. She was 96. Her four children, Prince Charles, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, all travelled to Scotland and Princes William and Harry have joined the rest of the family. She continued to carry out royal engagements until the end of her life. Her final official event was on Tuesday when she asked Liz Truss to become Prime Minister. The Queen was born on April the 21st, 1926. She became Queen aged just 25 on the 6th of February 1952 on the death of her father, George VI. Only a few years earlier, on her 21st birthday, Princess Elizabeth publicly dedicated her life to the service of the Commonwealth. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Well, the Queen's coronation took place in June 1953 at Westminster Abbey with 8,000 people present. Hundreds of thousands more lined the route outside the cathedral and an estimated 27 million watched the three-hour service live on TV. At the time of her accession to the throne, the Prime Minister was Winston Churchill. The Queen's reign included 18 general elections and she was served by 15 Prime Ministers. During her reign, she oversaw the transformation of the British Empire into the Commonwealth, which now comprises 54 member states. And um, as we're watching those gates at Balmoral, um, we can bring you the breaking news tonight uh, on Five News. And I'm afraid it is with great sadness that we bring you this news and tell you that Her Majesty the Queen has sadly died. Her family, including uh, Charles and Princess William and Harry, have travelled uh, to Balmoral earlier on today. And in the last few minutes, 
we have received uh, a statement from Buckingham Palace. And uh, I know that people are joining us all the time, and I know that this news is particularly significant, and I know that it's probably one of those days where many of you watching us tonight will be shaken by what you've heard because of the, the nature of the huge part uh, that the Queen has had in so many lives of so many people who are watching us tonight, but also have uh, lived their entire lives with Queen Elizabeth on the throne. And we are reflecting tonight on that news, uh, that we are bringing you the sad news of the death of Her Majesty the Queen. We are awaiting a statement from the palace, and uh, hopefully we can bring that to you now. Uh, it's very short, uh, there isn't much of it, but it is the news that we have been waiting for. It's the sad news confirmed by Buckingham Palace in the last few moments that the Queen has died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. That's just reaching us now tonight at Five News. We have some very important news. Buckingham Palace has just announced that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has died. She was 96 years old. The Queen died just a few moments ago, the announcements at Balmoral. She was the longest reigning monarch in British history and the world's oldest head of state. Her eldest son and heir, Charles, the former Prince of Wales, is now the king. As we leave the gates closing after one or two, it's worth remembering, and Balmoral is a huge functioning family estate and folk will work there, come and go, and we've seen cars do literally that, come and go. Uh, if they look like being ones that, uh, that matter, we will tell you. It is with profound regret that we share with you the news that in the last few minutes, Buckingham Palace has confirmed that Her Majesty the Queen has died. The statement reads, and I quote, The Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and Queen consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London. That is the statement from Buckingham Palace. We will now fade to black and we will play the national anthem.
Well, Royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams has told us the news is shocking for many people as Her Majesty's played such an important role. Well, we do interrupt this bulletin as in the last few minutes, we have had confirmation that Her Majesty the Queen has died at the age of 96. And we will be taking you back to the talk radio studio now to Vanessa Feltz. It is 6.32. The day is the 8th of September, 2022. And I'm extremely sorry to have to bring you the exceptionally sad news that Her Majesty the Queen has died. The news has been confirmed by Buckingham Palace. Her Majesty was 96 years old and had reigned for 70 years. News of her passing is reaching the rest of the world and she was monarch of more than 100 million people. Her reign began on the 6th of February 1952 when she was just 25. Well, good evening. I'm Piers Morgan at Talk TV in London. In the last few moments, Buckingham Palace have released a statement, and it reads as follows. The Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Hey everyone, some important news has come in and we thought that you would want to hear about it. So let's join our friends at Newsround to tell us more. Sean and the gang are back for some madcap adventures. Who's <whistles> your lad? The Rock and jump for joy. Because there's lots of mischief <whistles> and plenty of mayhem to go around. Don't miss all this fun with Sean the Sheep. Tomorrow at 3.45 on CBBC and iPlayer. Good afternoon. This is Newsround. We have some sad news to bring you today. Queen Elizabeth II has died at the age of 96. She passed away at Balmoral Castle in Aberdeenshire. She was the UK's longest serving monarch. She spent longer on the throne than any other king or queen. She became queen in 1952. Her death marks the end of an era for our country. Ricky looks back now at her life and reign. Queen Elizabeth II spent over seven decades on the throne. During that time, lots of things changed in Britain, but one thing that never changed was her strong belief that she had a duty to serve her people. I am before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Her grandchildren, Prince William and Prince Harry, were among the many people who were impressed by her dedication to her job constantly able to go into a room and bring the room to life. When Elizabeth was born in 1926, she wasn't actually supposed to become the Queen. Her uncle, Edward, was King, and the rules meant that if he had children, they would one day succeed him. However, when Elizabeth was just 10 years old, her life changed forever. Edward gave up the throne, and her father, King George VI, took over, meaning she would be Queen when he died. 
As a young princess, her life was dominated by World War II. It was then that her sense of public duty first came to the surface. She helped to keep people's spirits up by broadcasting messages of hope. Thousands of you in this country have had to leave your homes and be separated from your fathers and mothers. My sister Margaret Rose and I feel so much for you as we know from experience what it means to be away from those we love most of all. During this time, Princess Elizabeth had also fallen in love with Philip, Prince of Greece. They married in 1947, two years after the war had ended, and huge crowds celebrated their wedding around the country. In 1952, her father died and she became queen. Being the queen involved lots of responsibilities. She wasn't just the queen of Great Britain, she was also head of a group of 54 countries, including Australia, India, Jamaica and Canada. This group of countries is called the Commonwealth and visiting them was a big part of her role. Another part of her job was to offer guidance to politicians here in the UK. She met with the Prime Minister every week to be consulted on the biggest issues of the time. Her time as Queen wasn't always easy. One of the most difficult periods in her reign came in 1997 after the death of Princess Diana, who had been married to her son Prince Charles and was the mother of Princes William and Harry. Princess Diana had been very popular and when she died there was an outpouring of sadness. Thousands of people left flowers and cards at the gates of Buckingham Palace in London. At the time, the Queen was in Scotland with Prince William and Harry. She decided the family should stay there and grieve in private, rather than making statements or going back to London where the crowds of people were. Many thought this showed that she didn't understand their feelings and that the Queen was out of touch with her people. Eventually, she spoke to the public on live TV. What I say to you now, as your queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart. First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. It had been one of the few times in Queen Elizabeth's reign that large numbers of the public had been against her and the experience left her shaken. However, the family recovered from this difficult time and later in her life, there were lots of royal celebrations. One of the biggest was the wedding of Prince William to Kate Middleton, now called the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Around a million people gathered on the streets of London and some even camped out for days to see the royal couple. A year later, there were more celebrations, this time because the Queen had reached an important milestone, her Diamond Jubilee. That meant she had spent an incredible 60 years on the throne. The Jubilee came in the same year as the 2012 London Olympic and Paralympic Games. A few years later, the Queen celebrated her 90th birthday with lots of events including a service at St Paul's Cathedral and a giant street party with 10,000 guests. The monarch continued with her public duties and royal visits well into her 90s. The Queen encouraged the nation to keep going when the 2020 coronavirus pandemic hit the world. While we have faced challenges before, this one is different. This time we join with all nations across the globe in a common endeavour. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. Supporting her through her time as Queen was the Queen's husband, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. In April 2021, at the age of 99, Prince Philip died peacefully at home. The Duke of Edinburgh had been at the Queen's side since they married in 1947, and she often talked about how much she relied on his support. Following Prince Philip's death, the nation got one final chance to thank the Queen during the Platinum Jubilee celebrations in June this year. People from all across the UK and around the world witnessed a concert in front of Buckingham Palace, a pageant and even Paddington Bear meeting Her Majesty. You would like a marmalade sandwich? I always keep one for emergencies. So do I. 
I keep mine in here. Elizabeth II will be remembered as a queen who spent her life keeping the promise she made when she was first crowned to serve her people and her country. Queen Elizabeth II, who died today. We will have more information on the Newsroom website and the Newsroom Bulletin will be back tomorrow.